Speaker. This is about whether the very system of justice in our country can be trusted anymore. Without that, no republic can survive. See, the American people that we represent are losing count of the scandals that are mounting. The FBI has been involved. They've seen evidence that it's being used as a political tool of the Biden administration. They've seen counterterrorism resources being used against school parents, the homes of conservative political opponents being raided. They've seen conservative states being targeted over their election integrity laws and conservative Catholics and pro-life citizens characterized as violent extremists. Without objection. Mr. Director, what's the difference between a traditional Catholic and a radical traditional Catholic? Uh, I'm not a, an expert on the, the Catholic uh, orders. Well, your FBI wrote a memo talking about radical traditional Catholics. I'm just wondering if you could define it for us. Well, what I can tell you is you're referring to the Richmond product, which was a single product by a single field office, which as soon as I found out about it, I was aghast and ordered it withdrawn and removed from FBI systems. You were aghast. Then why won't you let us talk to the people who put it together? We are working on finishing an internal review into what happened We have there. to wait. The, we, the Congress, and the American people have to wait until you do an internal review. It's not a criminal investigation going on here. An internal review before we can talk to the people who wrote this? We, when we finish our internal review, which will be very soon, we will come, come back idea before how many the Catholics committee in America? and provide a briefing on what we found. Well, we appreciate the we briefing, can, but we want to talk to the people who wrote it. Any idea how can, many Catholics there are in America, Director? Uh, no, sir. There's a lot, over 60 million. What percentage of those are radical traditional Catholics, according to the Richmond Field Office of the FBI? Again, that product is not something that I will defend or excuse. It's something that I thought was appalling well, read, and removed it. Let's read from that product, page four of that product. By the way, the copy you gave us, when can we get a copy that didn't have all these redactions on it? So we can actually see what the American taxpayers were paying for to see their rights, their First Amendment religious liberty rights attacked. Let me just read from page four. Provide new opportunities to mitigate extremist threat through outreach to traditional Catholic parishes and the development of sources with the placement and access to report on places of worship. That's pretty fancy language for they're trying to put informants in the parish, in the church. That's what this memorandum said, Director, from one of your field offices. And you won't let us talk to the people who did it. Any response to that? I didn't know. I was waiting for the question. No, priest, do you think priest, priests should be informants inside the church, Director? We do not recruit, open, or operate confidential human sources to infiltrate, target, report. But that's not, uh, what, this, that's not what this said. It sounds like you were trying to do it in no, Richmond, Virginia. No, sir. No, sir. No, you sir. weren't? This, this didn't happen? You can assure us that this that, didn't happen? That product did not, to as best as we can tell, result in any investigative action as a result of it. None. You know what the motivation for this was? Why, why would they even think about doing this? You know what the motivation was? Well, again, I think that's what our internal review will find, and I'd rather wait until I hear what the results of that internal review Well, I don't need an are. internal review. I can read the document. I assume you can do the same, because it says right there on the same page. Richmond assesses extremist interest in radical traditional Catholics is like to in likely to increase over the next 12 to 24 months in the run-up to the next general election. Same paragraph. Events in which extremists and radical traditional Catholics might have common cause include legislation, judicial decisions in such areas as abortion rights, immigration, affirmative action, and LGBTQ protections. It's politics. That's the motivation. In the run-up to the next election, and they talk about the border, affirmative action, and, and, and abortion rights. It's total politics. I mean, I think it's interesting that affirmative, we just got a decision from a bunch of Catholics who sit on the United States Supreme Court relative to affirmative action. Politics was the total motivation here. And that's what's scary. That's what's, I think, so frightening and why we, why we, how this happens, I don't know. And five people signed off on it. Five people, including the chief division counsel at the Richmond Field Office. I'd like to talk to this lawyer. And a lot of people in this room went to law school, get a, con a course on the Constitution, talks about the First Amendment. I find that really scary. Again, when do you think we're going to have a chance? How soon are you going to complete this internal investigation so we can talk to these folks who put this together? I expect us to be able to brief uh, the committee on our internal review later this summer. Will that briefing include the names of the individuals who put this document together attacking Americans' First Amendment liberty? I'm not sure yet what it will include because it's not done yet, but when it is, we'll provide you with an appropriate briefing. What are you doing to fix it so this doesn't happen again? 
Well, we've already started putting in place a number of fixes, and those will be further informed by the results of the review. What are those fixes? More training, more things, more, you know, it's that same thing you told us on FISA. And while you may have some improvement, you still got 204,000 times the database was illegally searched. So what are the training and procedures you're putting in place? Well, I'll put the FISA stuff to the side. Oh, I'm just using that as an example of where you've that. told us the same thing, and you fixed something, and you haven't. I do not believe the number that you just invoked on the FISA side is since the reforms, the fixes, as you called them. Can we get uh, an unredacted? Those uh, post-date the numbers that you're referring Director, to. Director, can we get an unredacted copy while, while you're still doing this internal invest? Can we at least get an unredacted copy of this memorandum? I, I will find out if there's more of the, of the document that can be shared with you. We've tried to be very careful in what we redact, and there's always a, a basis for it. So let me go back and see if there's more that we can provide. But I, I know my instructions are to be as sparing as possible in the redactions that we provide. Gentleman from California. Uh, Director Ray, did the FBI ask financial institutions to turn over their customers? You yield the time to me. Did the FBI ask financial institutions to turn over their customers' debit and credit card purchase history in the Washington, D.C. area for January 5th and 6th, 2021? Uh, I don't know the answer to that as I sit here right now. Well, we do, because Bank of America gave us this email from the FBI to Bank of America. Well, I am aware that Bank of America provided information to the FBI, but what communications occurred between the FBI and Bank of America about it? Let's read it. To recap our morning call, are you, we are prepared to action the following threshold. Customers transacting debit card, credit card, Washington, D.C. purchases between 1521 1621. That's scary enough. But then the next bullet point is even more scary. Any any historical capital letters all capitals any historical purchase of a firearm you guys asked financial it's at least bank of america we think more did you guys ask him again i don't have the full sequence of the back and forth you've got one looks like you've got one email that i haven't seen before here um so i don't know that i have the full exchange that this well, is does this email trouble of... you as much as it does members of the judiciary committee that the FBI is asking for every single, I mean, we had members of Congress here that week, first time they're getting sworn in as a new member of Congress, their family in town, and you're sweeping, and they may happen to be a customer of Bank of America, and you're sweeping up every debit and credit card purchase of their family who were in town that week because their, their husband or their dad or their mom is getting sworn in as a new member of Congress? And then you're also saying, overlaying that information with, did, you, did this person buy a firearm? And the question is? I'm just nervous about that. Are you nervous about that? As, as I think I've testified before, my understanding is that our engagement with Bank of America uh, was fully lawful, but that we recalled the leads that were cut to field well, If it's offices. lawful, that's, that was my next point. If it's yeah. lawful, why did you say we're not going to use these leads? That's what Mr. Jensen testified to when we deposed him the director of the terrorism unit at, at, at the FBI, that's what he testified to. Why did, you, why did you not use the leads if it was lawful to get the information? Well, there are Chairman, it's of, one minute and 18 seconds over time. There, there are, sir, there are plenty of times where there are things that we lawfully can do, but that we decide is better that we not do. And yeah. I think that's what the happened. The idea there. that Mr. Massey said earlier, that, that this is lawful, that you can ask this is scary. This is something else we're going to have to change. Uh, with that, I would yield to the gentlelady from, recognize the gentlelady from